I'm just gonna jump into the good stuff, okay? So I specifically specified for what happens with the cases that we're gonna see. In our DEs, we're only doing of order two, okay? Which means we'll only either have a first derivative or first and second derivatives, okay? That's all we're gonna see. We're not gonna see higher powers or higher uh, derivatives, third derivatives, fourth derivatives, things like that. So what I did was I simplified the theorem for what happens if I have a double prime, right? Then I would get S squared times the Laplace of F minus S times F of zero minus no S, because it's a constant now, F prime of zero, okay? And what if it was just one prime? Then it would be S times Laplace of F minus F of zero, okay? So this is the rules that you're gonna use they follow from the theorem, but I just want to specifically specify what ours will look like, okay? And it's very similar if there's if they use y's or x's instead of f's, okay? So if they don't use f, you could still have y's and x's, and they'll all still be in, in terms of t, in terms of time. Those are called parametric equations. I don't know if you remember those from pre-cal but when you had x equals 2t minus 1 and y equals t squared, that was a parametric set of equations. Um, and so that's what we're going to be getting into here. So even though it says y, y is a function of t, okay? And so just like these definitions up here that I've spelled out, it's the same thing if you have y's prime and y double prime, okay? So for the Laplace of y prime, you get s times the Laplace of y, minus y of zero. Notice that there's no more primes anymore, right? Even if I do the Laplace of y double prime, I get s squared Laplace of y minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. Now it may look like there's a prime still, but it's not. This is just a value that's gonna be given to you. It's gonna be just a number. It's not gonna be any derivatives anymore, okay? So you're gonna turn something that had derivatives into something that no longer will have any derivatives. This is just gonna be a value that is given to you, okay? Same thing here, you have something that had a derivative and you're gonna turn it into something that will no longer have derivatives, okay? Now you notice that the, the theorem is always evaluated at zero, right? It's y of zero, f of zero, always at zero. So when they give you your initial conditions, they're always gonna be when t is zero, always, okay? Now the book likes to use capital letters instead of writing Laplace. I don't. I just wanted you to be aware of that. If you're looking at the solutions manual and in the middle of the problem, instead of writing L of Y, they might just start using capital Y, okay? It's just a notation. It's just because they're lazy and they don't want to write L braces, Y braces. <laughs> That's all it is, okay? I like to keep the L Y's in there only because that way I don't forget that that's a Laplace and I have to remove that Laplace if I want to figure out what Y is, right? So that's why I leave it in there. So when I work out all these problems, I don't ever use capital Y's. I will keep using L of Y all the time, okay? So this is our first example. It says use the Laplace transform to solve the initial value problem. You can only solve initial value problems using Laplace, okay? Those are the only kinds of problems we'll be allowed to solve. That's it. So this is just a fancy way of saying what? It's just a weird notation for what? What's another way I could write that? Mm-hmm, it's just a y prime. So I could write this as y prime minus y equal to one. And it says I have to use the Laplace transform, which means I have to Laplace the whole equation. Now remember, Laplace is an algebraic manipulator, which means if I'm going to uh, Laplace the whole thing, I could just Laplace each individual term. And at the same time, I can take out any coefficients. I just have to remember to Laplace everything, right? So notice how for the minus y, I kept the minus on the outside, and that's okay. Your Laplace transform is an algebraic transform. Now, I don't know what the Laplace of y is. 
So I cannot do this because I don't even know what the function is. It's a function in terms of t, but who knows what in the world it is, right? We have, weren't given that at all, okay? We can do the Laplace of 1 because we have a formula for that, right? I think it was 1 over s, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have my papers with me, but I believe that that's what it was. Right? So this side will become 1 over s, not 8. This is unfortunately stuck like that. And this I can transform. Okay, I have a definition for this. This thing right here will become S Laplace of regular Y minus Y of zero, according to my definition. Okay. Now again, I don't know what the Laplace of Y is. But do I know what y of 0 is? Mm -hmm. This is just 0. And I'm just rewriting the whole rest of the problem. Okay. So really, I have s times Laplace of y minus the Laplace of y equal to 1 over s. I want to get the Laplace of y by itself. Okay so that when I inverse Laplace it, I'll know what y is. And that's the whole goal when you're solving these DEs, right? Is you wanna know what y, what's y, okay? So in order for me to solve for Laplace of y, I would have to factor out the Laplace of y. Now whether you put the factor in the front or the back, it really doesn't matter because you're gonna get rid of it anyway, right? But if I factor out a Laplace of y, what's gonna go in the parentheses? What's in front of this Laplace? S. And what's in front of this Laplace? Negative one, right? Or minus one, okay? And if I were to distribute that Laplace back in there, I should get the same two terms that I had above. And that's how you know it's equivalent. Right? So just algebra, right? Nothing, no derivatives, nothing crazy going on here. Now, if I wanna get the Laplace by itself, please tell me I gave myself some more room. I did, but I'm gonna come over here first before I use that other page. I told you these things are long. <laughs> if I wanna get the Laplace of y by itself, what do I have to do with this to get rid of it? Divide by it. And if I divide by it, what that means is that instead of just an s downstairs, I'm now also going to have that s minus 1 downstairs. So now I have two things downstairs. There's no formula that has this form, okay? Because I'm about to Laplace inverse this so that I can figure out what y is. But none of my inverse formulas have this form, okay? Even if I were to distribute the s, I would have s squared minus s. That also does not fit any of my Laplace inverse forms, okay? So what I'm going to have to do is the partial fraction decomposition, okay? Because I do have a formula for something over s, and I do have a formula for something over s minus something, right? This one would be a constant, and that one would be an exponential function, right? So we've got to split this up. So I know that this is going to look something like a over s plus b over s minus 1. I just need to figure out what the a and the b should be. Okay? And so I'm going to do little squiggles because this is not part of my problem. It's just my side work, right? So, basically, we're trying to figure this out. I know there are different ways that you guys do. I saw it on the test one time, I think the first test. Y'all do it different. Some of you do it like me, some of you do it differently. I multiply everybody by the common denominator, s times s minus 1. And if I did that, both denominators would cancel here. Only the s would cancel here, and I'd be left with a times s minus 1. Here the s minus 1 would cancel, but I'd be left with b times s. So I'm literally taking s times s minus 1 times all three fractions, right? and turning it into a, uh, an equation that no longer has any fractions, okay? From there, I like to distribute and regroup. So 
So then I like to put my system here. So do I have any terms with S in them on the left-hand side? No, which means my coefficient for S would be assumed to be a zero, right? Because there's no S terms on the left side. But on the right-hand side, my coefficients for S are A and positive B, which means I would be using A plus B for my system of equations. Now for my constants. I have one here as my constant, and over here, this is the only constant I have, so it's just negative a. And that is quite enough to solve for the system, to figure out what is a and what is b. This one, if I divide by negative one, means a would equal what? Negative one. And if I were to plug that negative one back into the top equation, what would b equal? Mm-hmm, because I'd have to add that one over to the other side, right? So I would get one. So now I know what my fractions should look like. So I'm going to kind of try to show both pages at the same time. So my equation that I'm solving is going to become negative 1 over s plus 1 over s minus 1. Right? A is negative 1 and B is positive 1. Right? Those are the numbers we found. So all I did was just rewrite it with the appropriate numbers in the numerator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Laplace inverse every single term. Just like the Laplace is an algebraic operator, so is Laplace inverse. So I'm going to Laplace inverse the Laplace of Y. I'm going to keep my minus on the outside, and then I'm going to Laplace inverse 1 over s, keep my plus sign, oh, I guess that should have been in pencil, but it's okay, and then my 1 over s minus 1, and then let me close my braces. So notice that everything that I had there in pencil above is exactly what I have in pencil still, right? I just put the Laplace inverse on every single term, okay? This is just telling you what I'm gonna do. I like to write that before I do it, okay? Some people just start doing it, but I like to write it, okay? What happens when you have an inverse and, an, and it's original? Two inverses of each other? They undo each other, don't they? Or cancel each other. So what do I end up with on this left-hand side? If the inverse is going to undo the original, I'm just going to end up with y all by itself, right? Over here, I have this minus sign, and now I need to use the Laplace inverse of 1 over s. There's a formula for that. What is it? 1? Yep. Yeah. And then I have a Laplace inverse for this. All I have to have it is s minus something, and then it should be e to the 1 t, right? Or just t. You don't have to write the 1 t. But it would be whatever this number is times t, right? And if that really, really bothers you, you can rearrange it. But that's the answer. Okay? If I took the derivative of it and then I subtracted the original, I should get 1 because that's what the DE says. If I take the original and I subtract, or I'm sorry, if I take the derivative and I subtract the original, I should get one, right? And you can check your answers if you wanted to. This is where the calculus would come in, right? Only if you wanted to check. What is Y prime of this? E to the T, and the one just goes to zero, right? So then what would y prime minus y look like? It would be e to the t minus e to the t minus 1, right? Which if I distribute that minus sign, I get e to the t minus e to the t plus 1. These guys wipe each other out. And don't I get 1? Like it said I was going to, right? So it does check out. So if you really wanted to, you could check 
your answers. I wouldn't just because I did a lot of work, right? <laughs> just hopefully I did it correctly. But if you wanted to, there is a way to check them, which is why I was having you do that at the very beginning, right? When I was having you check to make, verify whether the DE, this is a solution to the DE or not, so that you could check your own answers, okay? Okay, of course, they're not going to take it easy on us, right? They're going to get harder. <laughs> So this one has, um, how many pages do I got here? So these are the only two examples I have. I have one example where you have just one prime, right? And then now we have a second example where we're going to have a double prime, okay? But with those two together, we should be able to figure out the homework because you got to get the process down. The process is Laplace everything. Use your, use your definitions for your derivative Laplace, right? Then get the Laplace of y all by itself, and then Laplace inverse, okay? The only part is, is that when you try to Laplace inverse, that may require you to do partial fraction decomp. Almost always, it's going to require you to do partial fraction decomp. I can't even think of a homework problem that doesn't make you do partial fraction decomp, okay? If you're, there is one, you're really, really lucky <laughs> because they all have to do it, okay? Because once you get that Laplace Y by itself, you always end up with this multiplier that you have to divide by, which causes a problem, okay? Okay, so let's see this one here. If I do the Laplace of everything, I like to just write it out first. I don't like to just jump in and start using formulas. Oh, this is a constant, isn't it? Square root of 2. It's an ugly constant, but it is a constant. So I can use that on the outside. And then I just try to make it a point that you don't stick the t inside the square root, right? It's just the square root of 2 times t, okay? So the t is not in the square root. Okay, now let's use our definition. So the definition of the Laplace double prime is going to be S squared times the Laplace of Y minus S times Y of zero minus a constant one times Y prime of zero. It's always in that order. It's always Y of zero first and then if you have to the primes, okay? That's just using the definition. But that's not the whole thing I have, right? That's just this. I just use the definition for that part. I still have plus Laplace of y, and I still have square root of 2 times the Laplace of this. There's a formula for that, and I know it's a fraction, and I know it's s squared, is it plus or minus? plus, right, s sine squared plus cosine squared, and then I should have the square root of 2 squared. Cosine is the one with the s on top, is it not? Mm -hmm. And so sine should be the one with that number on top, square root of 2. So I'm just using my formulas for that part, okay? The formula says what? The formula says sine of kt is supposed to be k over sine squared plus k squared, right? That's the formula that I'm using. And I told you how I remember those between the hyperbolics, right? Just to review. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. I know that from the Pythagorean. Theorem. So that's how I remember that the bottom should be plus for sine and cosine. For hyperbolics, sine squared hyper or hyperbolic sine squared minus hyperbolic cosine squared equals one. And so that's why I know for the hyperbolics it's going to be a minus downstairs. Okay? And then the only way I remember, and it's hard to remember it, because one has an S on top and the other has the K on top, right? To me, 
and the reason why it's tricky is because sine begins in an S, right? And cosine ends in an S. <laughs> so it's not like you can just take whichever one has an S has an S on top. I always remember the one that ends in an S has the S and the end on top, right? That's how I remember it, okay? So I don't usually have my papers with me with all the little formulas. I just, those are the things that I use to help me remember them, okay? Okay, so now we've got that down. We still got a bunch of numbers to plug in because what is y of zero? That is 10. And what is y prime of zero? This guy. Zero. I'm using my initial conditions, right? This guy is stuck. If I multiply a square root of 2 times a square root of 2, what do you end up with? 2. two. And so then I end up with down here, s squared plus 2. I'm going to eventually have to turn it back. I know I am. But for right now, I'm going to leave it alone like that with the 2s. It just helps me visually. I don't like seeing the square roots. Okay. So let's see what we've got there. This term is going to go away. But I'm going to have s squared Laplace of y minus 10s plus Laplace of y equal to 2 over s squared plus 2. When you're solving for something, the first thing you need to do before you even factor it out is get all the terms with that thing that you're trying to get by itself, all the terms that don't have it to the other side, okay? So the 10s is a problem. It doesn't have a Laplace y attached to it, does it? So then it needs to go to the other side, okay? So I'm going to add 10s to both sides. So I have s squared Laplace of y plus Laplace of y equal to 2 over s squared plus 2 plus 10s over 1, really, right? It's not really a fraction. I will eventually have to make it all one fraction, right, in order to do my, far, my partial fraction decomp. Um, but I'm going to do that at the same time that I factor out my Laplace of y. Okay? So if I factor out the Laplace of y over here, what would I have inside the parentheses? Mm -hmm. So this outside guy and then this invisible outside guy, right? Over here, I'm going to have to get a common denominator, which means I need to multiply 10s times s squared plus 2. So that I'm not changing the fraction, right? I'm just multiplying by a really ugly 1, right? Before I put that s squared plus 1 downstairs on the other side, let me fix it first and make it one big fraction. So if I distribute this 10s, I'm going to put it in descending order. Okay? So I'm going to get 10s cubed plus 20s, and then I'm going to have my plus 2 from the left fraction. Okay? So I'm just putting it in descending order. Only because I know the partial fraction decomp is coming, right? And so it's nice to have them all in order. Now, if I want the Laplace all by itself, this guy is going to have to get divided, which means now it's going to be downstairs. So I'm going to have two things downstairs. I'm going to have s squared plus 2, and I'm going to have s squared plus 1. So two terms down there. Now we do have formulas for s squared plus 2 downstairs, and we do have formula for s squared plus 1 downstairs. They just can't be together. They have to be separate, right? And normally you would try to factor these, but you can't, right? You can't factor a sum of squares. When you can't factor it, that means this is stuck as a quadratic. And so is this. Even though there's not three terms, it's still a quadratic, right? It's got a square, this one's got a square. 
which means we have to remember the way it's supposed to break out into a partial fraction decomp. We know that when you have a square, you're going to have a s plus b for one fraction, and then you're going to get c s plus d for the other quadratic. Okay. If they weren't squared, I would just have a and b, right? But because they're squared, I have to have a linear, one degree less up top, okay? Now, I may not end up with both numbers. I may not end up with an a and a b. Some of them might be zero, right? Could happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. I do. Yeah, it does happen. <laughs> I have to write it down, because otherwise I make mistakes. And if y'all don't catch me, then the whole thing's wrong. <laughs> so I have to be prepared. Okay, so let's set up this this partial fraction decomp. I'm going to do my little scribbles over here. I'm going to give myself quite a bit some room. Now, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it all in one. So I know this is my common denominator, right? I'm just going to do it all together. Instead of writing this equal to these two, I'm going to do it all together and get rid of all the fractions at the same time. So if this is my common denominator and I multiply this on the top, aren't these both going to cancel? And so I'm going to end up with 10s cubed plus 20s plus 2. And if that's supposed to equal these guys, and I multiply by that same common denominator, the s squared plus 2 will cancel, but I'll still have as plus b times the s squared plus 1. For the second fraction, Again, this is the same common denominator. If I multiply it here, the s squareds plus ones will cancel, but I'll still be left with c s plus d times s squared plus two. So it still isn't quite pretty, but it's what we've got to deal with. Now I am because of the way I do it, right? I don't even think you could do it the other way because it doesn't matter what you let s equal they're not all just going to disappear, right? Because some of you use that strategy where you all say, if it's s minus 1, you let s equal 1 and then rewrite the equation and you solve for something or another. I just don't do them that way because it doesn't always work. So I do it this way. I need to distribute that out because I need to see if I'm going to end up with any cubes, right? Let's see. This times this is going to be a s cubed then plus a s then plus b s squared and then plus b i'm going to put the other factors underneath okay and when i put them underneath i'm going to try to line them up okay so i'm going to do c s times s squared that's going to give me an s cubed right a c s cubed so i'm going to put it underneath the c s cubed that's already there and it will be positive then cs times 2 is going to have an s, so I'm going to put plus 2cs. Then d times s squared is going to be ds squared. And then finally, d times 2 is 2d. Okay, this is what I've got. This is all I need in order to come up with my system. How many equations am I going to have in my system? Mm -hmm. You have to start with the highest exponent. Highest exponent is cubed, right? So that's one equation. Then I have to look at the coefficients of s squared. Then I have to look at the coefficients of s. And then I have to look at the constants. So that's four different equations I'm going to have here. Okay? Hopefully some of them will kind of like help me out here, right? <laughs> then I don't have some craziness going on afterward. So for s cubed, I have 10 as the coefficient on the left side, and I have a plus c as the coefficients on the right side. Now, s squared. What is the coefficient of s squared on the left? Does it even have an s squared? No s squared, which means the coefficient would be 0, because there are 0 s squareds, right? But over here, these are my coefficients for s squared. So I'm going to end up with b plus d. 
Now for s, I have 20 as my coefficient on the left side. And over here, I have a plus 2c as my coefficients on the right side. And finally, my constants, I have 2 on the left. And over here, these are my constants. So I have b plus 2d. This does help me a little bit because basically what I have is two mini problems, right? <laughs> I have one with A and C's and then I have another one with B's and D's, okay? So I'm gonna separate these four equations into two separate two equation systems, okay? So basically I wanna figure out what is this and I wanna figure out what is this. Okay, I just want to put those two together and see what I get. Well, I like to use the elimination method. So you choose. Do you want to eliminate A or C? Which one looks easier to you? It don't matter, but which one looks easier to you? A? Okay, so somebody needs to be negative then, right? So I can cancel out. So because I want to end up with the positive just because, I'm going to make the top one negative. So this is going to be negative, negative, and negative. I basically multiplied by a negative 1, right, to everybody. So this is going to be 10. The A's are going to cancel. And how many C's am I going to be left with? Just one C. And I already have it, right? And if I go back in and I plug that into the top equation, 10 equals A plus 10, what is A going to equal? Zero. So I've got two of them. I knew some of them were going to go to zero. And there's a zero, which makes it easier because then I don't have two, four different fractions here. I just have one. Maybe another one. Okay. Now here, we could do the same thing, right, to get rid of B. So we can make all of these guys negative. Well, it don't really matter because 2 minus 0 is still 2. Those go away, and I have D. And if I plug that back into the original top equation, what do I get for B? Negative 2. So I have three numbers. One of them I don't have to worry about, right? But I do have three of them. So when I come back to my original problem, I don't have this term because I got zero for A, right? So this term is not going to be there. However, I have to put negative two for B. And then for C, what did I get? I got 10. And what did I get for D? 2. This one actually does have to be manipulated because I still have two terms on top. And those formulas that have S squared plus 1 at the bottom don't have two terms. They either have the S or they have the constant, right? They do not have two terms. So I'm going to have to split up that second fraction before I start messing around with the Laplace inverse. I don't want to do too much, so let me just do what I said, and then I'll mess around with it in a minute some more. Okay. I know I'm going to Laplace inverse, but before I do, I want to make it look exactly like it's supposed to look for my formulas, okay? So I'm going to rewrite this. This is going to be S squared plus the square root of 2 squared. Is that the same denominator? Okay. 
But that means I have a constant up here, which means I should have the square root of 2 up there, right? It should be that same constant in order for me to use that formula. Now, however you figure that out, whether you know that this times this is negative 2, or whether you just stuck the negative 2 underneath the square root of 2 to cancel that one out, it's still going to equal this once you rationalize the denominator. Okay, so whichever way you do it, it's fine. You'll still get the same thing. That's the first term. The second term, I have an S, but that's all I should have upstairs. So I'm gonna break it up and put the 10 on the outside. And what squared gives me one? Just one squared, right? Here, I should have a constant on top, but it should be this constant on top whatever I have inside the square, which happens to be a 1, which means the 2 needs to get kicked out to the front, right? Now it's ready for my Laplace inverse. And I'm going to put all of that stuff in front of the fractions outside of my Laplace inverse. Now this is just me, because I want to make it look exactly like the way it's supposed to look. Some people already see it, but I like to make it just to be sure. Is it going to fit? Let's see. Yeah. There we go. So let me zoom in there because I really had to squeeze it <laughs> in there to fit it in there. But it's the same line as above, just with the Laplace inverses, right? And the little constant coefficients on the outside. So we already know that an inverse and a regular function undo each other, so I end up with y. I'm going to have this coefficient of negative square root of 2. And that one has the plus, so it's not the hyperbolics, but it has a constant up top, which means it should be sine. And then I'm going to end up with that constant times t. Plus 10, this one also has a plus downstairs, so no hyperbolics, but it has an s on top, which means it's cosine. And that would be cosine of 1t. But I'm not going to write 1t. We're just going to write t. Plus 2. Same thing again. Plus means no hyperbolics. It's got a constant up there. So it's going to be sine. And always look down here to see what is going to go next to t. It's going to be a 1 that's next to t. So it's just going to be 1t or t. Now this was super long. I don't want to take the derivative of this. It's not hard to, but I don't want to. And then to do the second derivative, right? I would just like be, okay, I did it. <laughs> I wouldn't check it. But you could if you wanted to. You could take its derivative, take its second derivative, plug it back into that original DE and see if you get whatever they said we were supposed to get. That was a long one though, right? So there's not a whole bunch of them, but I promise you it's a lot of homework <laughs> because they take a long time to do, okay? And it's really easy to lose focus on what you're doing. Yes? It's 4.21. This is 4.21. No, 4.22. It's in the 4.2 section. Just look for 34, 35. 36, 37, and 40. Now you have this one in your solution, student solutions manual, but I promise you they do not show everything. It's very like this short. When you see how long, how much paper it takes, right? It's long, but they'll just be like, oh, this is equal to this, and not even show you the partial fraction decomp, okay? 
<laughs> so it's good to have it as a guide, right? It'll help you with the other ones if you can figure that one out first. But you will need to figure out five of them, okay? Now, those are the single guys. I may not even, I don't know what I want to do. Let me see, how many problems do I have? I think I might, I have one. Okay, that one's little. This one's big. This one is big. So two big ones and that's it. So I don't have that many examples for the next class. Um, they're just super duper duper long. I think for the rest of today's class, I want you to practice these. Um, if you haven't looked at 4.1 homework and 4.2.1, then you can go ahead and start looking at those now. Um, but I want you to start practicing these because I need you to know how to do this before we get to 4.6. Because 4.6 is double, okay? I mean, I'll just show it to you real quick. And we're not going to do it. And I don't expect you to understand what you're seeing. I'm just going to show it to you, okay? You have a system. A system. Where do I want to start? Oh, my God. Three pages. Four pages for the problem, by the way. They're long. <laughs> ah, okay. So here we go. I'll give you this one. This is like a really short one. We're going to do it. But you have two equations, don't you? Two. And yes, you have your initial, and these only have one prime. What happens if you have two equations and two double primes, right? This is already a lot, <laughs> okay? You have to do the Laplaces of everything. This was my old semester, so I did do the capital letters, but I don't do them in this semester because I don't like it. Um, I was just trying to follow the book because it was the first time I taught it. <laughs> but I don't like doing that. I like to leave the L's in there. But yes, you solve this. You come up with an equation for one side, an equation for one other side. That is a system of equations. You have to get rid of one of the variables in that system of equations. So once I got rid of the y's somehow, I ended up with just the x's and I was able to find out what x is, okay? Then I have to go back to that system and eliminate the x so that I'm left with nothing but a bunch of y's and then I could figure out what y is, okay? So it's a lot. And then if you have double primes, look at this one, right? It's bigger, <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff, okay? So I need you to have some practice with these problems here before we go jump into those, okay? So you need to be able to Laplace, you need to be able to Laplace inverse, and then you need to be able to do a DE, okay? So I need you to practice that. We have until the whatever it was, right? The fifth, the fifth. So we have a few days. Dun, 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 dun. So if we do review on the 31st, and I cover 4.6 on the 24th. That means today we can work on the other stuff and then the 29th we can work on 4.6 as a class before we do the review, okay? Um, I kind of want y'all to do it on the board though because I need to see where y'all are. So let me gather my thoughts here. I think what I want to do is I want to go to 4.1 and put the homework problems on the board and then everybody tried to do one of the homework problems from 4.1. If we get all of that done, then we'll go on to 4.2.1, okay? Because we still have like an hour, right? So you guys take a take a 10 minute break at, what is it, 11.05? Um, I'll have stuff on the board and then everybody will try to do something, okay? But we're starting at the beginning, not jumping into this, okay? Yes, you can use your notes. <laughs> your notes, your book, anything, yes. <laughs> Each other, yes, everything. 